Because in Nigeria, when we get gifted something as much as prayers or money, for women, we kneel down what the royal family will call a curtsy, but we literally take both knees to the ground. And that's a sign of respect, but it's also a sign of saying thank you. And similarly, men would, you know, they would, you know, literally lay down prostrate on the floor as a form of gratitude as well. Similarly, it's done in weddings in our traditions. So we definitely use the body there. But I think I then witnessed it in a different way when I lived in Japan. And, and as the world and humanity evolves, it's getting even more. Like I, I use the word and I've got a charity named after it, Sawabona, I see you. That there's I, even though it's just a word, there is gratitude somewhere in that. So, and I think in in and I've learned that word in Australia through my partner, who is you know for want of a better word, he's Caucasian, and and how fascinating that I learn all these things from different parts of the world and different people. So those that the embodiment of gratitude probably has moved me more than any other word. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the gratitude seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with us, we have an engineer by profession, an entrepreneur by passion, and a transformation mindset coach by mission. She speaks to how we can work to shift humanity and engineer power in people despite predisposed trauma. She's an author, a documentary producer, speaker, engineer, and all-around fearless thought leader on creating your own memo. A tireless advocate for self-empowerment and guiding others to create their own memo, Yemi Pan, our guest today, is a global businesswoman dedicated to raising awareness on worldly issues daring, to, daring humanity to act on creating a just world. And uh, this part of the, the story I find even more interesting than um, this short intro. She was born in the UK. She was raised in Nigeria. She lived in Japan and now she's living in Sydney. She's a citizen of the world. She has multiple businesses. And now she's in Sydney, Australia, here with us, uh, talking about our favorite topic, gratitude. Welcome, Yami. Oh, thank you so much, Georgian. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before, but your tone, your pace, your energy, you just de describing me just actually made me feel really blessed. And I'm not trying to use any pun with the title of your podcast, but just made me grateful for how, how far I've come. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. An absolute honor to be here. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's an honor to, to have you here with me, with us. And um, yeah, uh, I'm very grateful that we get to explore this topic together. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm always uh, very curious about people that have traveled your experience is even more profound, um, having lived in, in so many places in the world and in so many cultures. Um, I, I see this in myself. Whenever I travel and I go to different parts of the world, I, I get transformed. I get to see new things and understand new things. Um, and I'm curious, how how has this experience of living in so many places changed you uh, and influenced the person who, who you are today and also if you've seen some some particularities in different cultures related to mm -hmm. gratitude oh wonderful question and once again a question that oh 
I know it just comes from someone who is cultured, someone who is diverse, and this is the reason why I will always represent diversity of everything, thought. And that's exactly what I learned, I've learned from all the countries I've either traveled to or lived in. It was this opening of wanting to learn a different way of being. I didn't know that's what I was after. I knew I was after change. I knew I was after a certain level of excitement, even though I'm an introvert. Subconsciously, I just wanted to know, how does the other person live? What mm -hmm. other reality is there that differs from mine? And that would have started from Nigeria. I mean, while I was young in London, yes, I have some memories, but then Nigeria was very different. And that was contrast. And I think that was probably the first introduction of contrast in culture, contrast in understanding, co contrast in language, and therefore contrast in feelings and emotions. And effectively, that probably got imprinted in my DNA from obviously my parents making those decisions to me now wanting to taste a bit more. And I, I have to say that one thing... <sighs> all those different countries has done is that it's just, it's widened my awareness of how much I do not know. That's wonderful. <laughs> and, and very wise. Um, I think, yeah, we, we have a, a tendency to, to, to think that we know so much, but yes. when, when we, when we are open to new understandings and to new ways of being, we understand that, actually there there's so much more to life and to how it can be lived um yeah, in by different people in in different parts of the world so um i want to get back to the second part of, of my question um, because i i love exploring gratitude uh, from um, the perspective of different people in different parts of the world different cultures um, different religions and I'm, I'm very curious if you've seen um, certain things manifested in, in different ways in uh, the places where, you, where you've lived. Yeah, definitely. So living in Okinawa, Japan was quite interesting. And it's funny, I mean, I know this is voice, but just imagine my hands together as if it's in a prayer motion. And I don't know whether it was Thailand or Japan, but I think they both played a role where when I'd go shopping or buy something from the local Okinawans, there was this gratitude with a, with a mini bow and their hands together. And I think that shifted me. That shifted me because, yes, I think, I think I had grown up learning to express gratitude by saying thank you, but I'd never seen the body be used. Mm. Actually, that might be a bit of lie, be used in that way. Because in Nigeria, when we get gifted something as much as prayers or money, for women, we kneel down what the royal family will call a curtsy, but we literally take both knees to the ground. And wow. that's a sign of respect, but it's also a sign of saying thank you. And similarly, men would, you know, they would, you know, literally lay down prostrate on the floor as a form of gratitude as well. Similarly, it's done in weddings in our traditions. So we definitely use the body there. But I think I then witnessed it in a different way when I lived in Japan. Um, and, and as the world and humanity evolves, it's getting even more. Like I, I use the word and I've got a charity named after it, Sawabona, which, and I need to get this right, I, I tend to get it confused. I don't know whether it's the Zulu nation where it's I see you. There, there's, I, even though it's just a word, there is gratitude somewhere in that. So, and I think in, in and I've learned that word in Australia through my partner who is, you know, for want of a better word, he's Caucasian. And, and how fascinating that I learn all these things from different parts of the world and different people. So those, the, the embodiment of gratitude probably has moved me more than any other word. I find this fascinating. It, it's so interesting that, okay, um, we we're used to to hearing the gratitude we're used we're used somehow to 
um, uttering the words. Mm. But when we see it in in this way, um, it's so it, it's so different, and it's also a part of uh, how we communicate. Um, even though we are just uh, using our voices right now, mm. when we interact with people in in real life, we communicate with other parts of our body as well and um you can see yes. gratitude in in people's eyes in people's faces mm -hmm. um but I, i think it's it's very interesting uh by by using the hands and also even more so for me because um the um, and the artwork for the gratitude podcast is actually a somehow uh, painting a cartoon of myself with that position you know <laughs> wow yeah exactly i mean yeah once again how fascinating how how fascinating and i wonder whether yeah i wonder when humanity will bind together and say can you see how a symbol and a seated position or how we place our hands can unify us in gratitude it's powerful Yeah, definitely. I love this. I love this. And um yeah, it's it's these things that um can us actually bring us together because nowadays I believe it's it's pretty hard in in some situations because one way or another there are many um occurrences in which we get divided. We think, yes. okay, you are different from me. I'm different from you because you you believe that, and I believe that. But I I think it's so important that we we get together in in these kinds of things and see yes. the fact that we are um, together in this and we're yeah. we're one. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, and yes. I agree with all of that. I I, I think that's going to be the the quest, the opportunity. For humanities to, and I know we have so many teachers who have, have shared it. Of where is the joy in our differences? It's just, um, it's crazy to me. Like just already being in this podcast, just you know, the vibration of your voice for me exudes gratitude, and what it's doing for me is slowing me down in what I'm saying and thinking, and that's that's difference. Like that's got to be celebrated. Because it's different from what or how I would typically show up in other interviews. Um, I just want the world, yeah, I want the world to see and feel that. I love that. Thank you so much for for your kind words, and yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And I think in, indeed it's very important to to become aware of these things. Um, they might be very small, and uh, we might just miss them. Um, but they do influence us, um, mm. hopefully in a positive way. The same way, or uh, the opposite way, actually, uh, in which the news, for instance, influences us when it's uh, very fast-paced and mm. it's a lot of information, a lot of things that we should be um, aware of or should we should be um, frightened by. You know, mm. it's it's uh, very very different, and I love the fact that you mentioned um, in the beginning the the word contrast, mm. because it's it contrast is is one of the the best ways to help us experience gratitude. Because mm. when when we are in our cozy homes, for instance, um, a lot of the day. Um, We we don't appreciate how how good it actually is. We 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 don't see it unless we go outside and it's very warm or it's very mm. very cold, and we get back and it's like oh my god, it's so good to be home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true, very true. And I can only imagine the contrasts that you've experienced. And I would love if you would be so kind to. Um, help us to take us there and to um, describe the, the kinds of contrasts that you have experienced that have 
helped you become a, a more grateful person? Mm. The first thing that comes to mind is, you know, some of my taglines is this transmutation of pain to power. So most of, I truly believe that most of my painful moments actually have ended up being my most grateful ones. And, you know, I do this thing with some of my clients and more so in organizations where we call it pain to power mapping. And the gift you've given me is sprinkling gratitude in that because it's, <laughs> it's really a recipe that's um, overlooked. So if I just give a very simple example, I remember my mum sending me to boarding school in Nigeria. Um, and, you know, in all my interviews, I have to say this, because when I say boarding school and I've got a British accent, people think, oh, I went to a nice boarding school like Prince Charles and Prince William. And no, none of that. It, it was like a scene of survivor, but there's no camera crew. You might not even be given some bags of rice. You definitely can't go fishing. So very much fend for yourself at the age of 11. And I was scared. I had lived in the UK for some years where there was running water from the taps, where you could just walk down the shop and get some sweets. To go into a boarding school that was in Nigeria, so not in the UK, it was out back, so as deep into the suburbs as possible. Um, I mean, you if you try to run away, there was every possibility that you were not going to make it anywhere because it was just so far by car. And to make it more challenging, um, my mum had left to go to the UK with my three younger sisters and my two brothers were going to a day school and not boarding school. I, I mean, I think I remember hearing my heart literally crack and break, either from genuine heartbreak or just being scared. And even just reliving it now, I'm just thinking of the trepidation that would have been within my body. But it it felt painful and although it may have taken a few years to get this the gift that that opportunity gave me was resilience like no other the gift it gave me was the appreciation for the contrast i had had from turning on the taps to walk in three kilometers with a bucket on my head um, they also gave me the tools so i'm about to start living as much off grid, meaning trying not to rely on society to give me electricity, but relying on the sun and using solar panels or compost toilets, like really trying to change bits of my life. And hadn't I gone to boarding school, that would feel like I was having less. It's the constant contrast. And I guess what I want to share is that even though it may have taken me a few years, possibly even a couple of decades to really realize the authentic power I got from that. Truthfully, it's been giving me resilience all along. So that moment truly, truly shaped me. And similarly, you know, you look at the statistics of divorce and separation. When I went through my divorce, I, I felt like a, a failure. I, I did, not, not as much because I'd been doing work and I was beginning to learn to, to love myself because that, that was the only way that I was going to, really survive and thrive. But what I looked at was lessons from previous relationships having gone really wrong, was what happens when I make the conscious choice to have a great relationship with my ex-husband, the man I share a son with, what would it look like? And I found everything in me, everything in me to make that relationship count whether that meant when he came over from the States to visit us in Australia, making sure he didn't have to pay for a hotel room. Come, come stay at the house, be close to your son. If necessary, I'll go stay in a hotel. You know, these were things that I didn't have before. And one role that gratitude played is, and, and I read this in the book called The Magic by Rhonda Byrne, was I made sure I let him know what I was thankful for in him something I hadn't done in my first relationship with my daughter's dad. Not that I didn't appreciate him, I did. It's just that there's something very different when you let people know. 
So when I thank people now, as you may have noticed, I've done so much. I mean, it's literally part of my personality now is when I thank people, I don't just thank them anymore. I tell them why I thank them. That, that's the true juice of gratitude is to let you know that it's not superficial. And even though there is great benefit in at least saying thank you, even if you don't kind of mean it, it's a little better than not doing it at all. I want, I want people to know. And, and I did that. I did that because I did not want a storyline that says another divorce has gone messy and the child has to pay for it. It was showing gratitude for what he did do and just not focusing on whatever it was he didn't do. And I tell you, the relationship with my ex-husband almost makes me want to weep um, because it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. We co-parent. You know, my son has lived with his dad now for the past year. Um, I went over to see him and, you know, my ex-husband and his wife, they take me out for dinner. We, we were dressed up as Harry Potter for Halloween in the States. I, I've, I've never seen examples of positive relationships after divorce like that. And I created it. And I think gratitude, not think, I know gratitude had a lot to do with it. Oh, wonderful question. I've never answered that. And it just kind of landed within me. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And I, I love the fact that you, that you mentioned this part about uh saying thank you really meaning it and really being um specific about it and i and i definitely felt it and i'm sure that our audience have have felt it as well when mm -hmm. uh when you when you thanked me i could really feel it and it was really something deep and when mm -hmm. when that happens um it's it's just another level of of gratitude and um it's it's great for both people uh yes. in in my opinion like you get to experience a, a more profound gratitude yourself and i get to to experience that as well and mm -hmm. now <laughs> actually our listeners are are doing that hopefully uh <laughs> also you know so it's um uh, a wonderful way of uh, amplifying gratitude in ourselves and and in others and i, I think it's it's something uh very powerful and it's a it's a great tip for for our listeners as well how mm. how did you get to uh to start this habit like when did this change happen or were you always uh so mm. open to uh to going so deep into gratitude no I wasn't like you know like most of your guests haven't listened to some of your podcasts and and just watching a lot of us think that we are grateful you know I've got a teenage daughter and I said I think I said once I called I would have said something like you know you're not grateful or I can't remember and she was really hurt she was really hurt and there might have been some misunderstanding of it, it was me trying to get her to understand the, the blessings that contrast can give. And, and it's very hard to teach it. I think you need to experience it, which is why most people feel like they go through pain. But if we look at it from a different perspective, there's, there's so much joy and growth in it. But when, when her and I decided to have that conversation, I decided to do this gratitude, you know, list with her and that was where you know I'd read the book The Secret by Rhonda Byrne and I found that powerful you know I'd be trying to see if I could change a traffic light while I was trying to get to a destination or if I could magic myself a car spot it just became a game the secret the law of attraction and then my sister mentioned um the mag or magic or whatever it's called and it was just 28 days and it was hard I mean firstly when the first task said write something, write 10 things you are grateful for every day. I remember thinking, this is going to be hard. And that was when I realized, wow, if I can't find 10 things I'm grateful for in a day, then I'm literally just existing. I'm not even really taking note of the clean water I'm drinking or taking note of the trees, you know, giving me the ability to breathe clean air or the bus driver who set his alarm for 4 a.m. so that he could pick me up from my bus stop at 5 a.m. These were things 
for granted. And it didn't mean I wasn't grateful for what they did, but I just, I just wasn't slow enough. And so the, the magic in that 28 days really ingrained in me. And then when it got to the part of, oh, the difficult relationship, right? 10 things you're grateful for. That blew my mind because the minute I let go, the minute my ego took a backseat, it turns out there are so many things to be grateful for within the person in which you think you have a difficult relationship with. It was profound. And the amount of brilliance that was coming out, I mean, just speaking to you, there is, there is, I feel like there's something going on in my body. It's like there's a party. It shifts it and all of a sudden it just attracts more goodness. And, and some people think it's about, you know, being grateful to get lots of goodies back. It really isn't about that, although I can say that that just happens. I just think it's just part of the philosophy of gratitude. But the things that would show up in my life, or maybe it was just the things that I was now seeing that I never saw before, it just became, it became a no-brainer. It became a no-brainer. And, and now when I can, for someone who didn't like eye contact, when I can, I, I like to use soft eyes because my eyes were very piercing at some point to just let someone know that I see them when I say thank you. And um, I've just made it part of my life. I mean, what do they say? It takes six or is it 12 weeks to, to hold on to a habit? And so it's just it's part of my life and I do it in my relationships and I do it with my kids and in, in all my business transactions. That's wonderful. I, I mean, this is exactly uh what what we're looking for here on on the gratitude podcast and um what we want as gratitude seekers to be able to be the change we, that we want to see in the world be those Absolutely. people that are um that are grateful that are giving gratitude that express their um appreciation mm. because um at least in my experience what i've seen that one of the, the the things that people yearn for is actually appreciation being seen being uh, appreciated and for whatever reason um, there aren't many people that actually give that appreciation that actually yeah. say thank you and mean it and it's it's the <laughs> One of the juices of life, let's not say it's the, the juice of life, but one of them, um, when we hear that what we are or what we do is appreciated, that makes our hearts sing and uh, we just want to, to do more and be more and yes. grow like like a flower. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. Yes. I mean, living in Australia, I'm, I'm living on indigenous land where the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, and a couple of years ago, I don't know exactly how long, an apology was, was made for a lot of the impacts that they, that would have had on that, on generations. And, you know, just one of the stories is the stolen generations, how they'd be separated from family. And that apology although it wasn't, you know, it might be another form of gratitude, was actually acknowledging that we see you for the pain we caused. And that created a lot of, of healing, restoration. Um, and, and maybe gratitude after an apology is, is something that if our leaders did more of, like you said, because everybody wants to feel appreciated, I, I, I think there'd be a true shift a major shift but I guess it starts with us as individuals and that's why I'm I'm grateful for the grateful podcast because people can hear this and start applying it in their life and then it has the trickle effects that you know it gets around the world of of ways in which we can we can show appreciation for others but also ourselves exactly exactly and getting getting to this point um I love some something that uh, you mentioned before us um, going live. Uh, you mentioned that gratitude is the world, the word for uh, 2020 for you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share a bit more about this? Yeah, well, 2022. I think you're still stuck in 2020. In 2022, oh, next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it's probably etched in everyone's mind. 
Yes, yeah, yeah. so I went to an event last week and lady had some cards. And usually I try to get words that I'd like to affiliate with, but I saw it and gratitude just came up. Um, and, you know, I embody gratitude, I believe, and I can always do more. But the reason why I chose that for the next year is because it really is the juiciest place to be in. It, it, <laughs> Um, I don't know, if, have, you ever, have you ever found out, let's just say you found the cure to one of the most crippling diseases, whether it's cancer, sickle cell, you just, you're going to want to share it with everybody. For me, that's what gratitude has done for my life. You know, something I teach my kids, sometimes I'm a little bit harsh with my words, but I tell them, you've got to be grateful for what you've got. You've just, you've really got to, whatever you believe in, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, like almost every teacher and ancient scholar has, has somehow made reference to that being grateful for what you have. Everything else is going to fall around that. I know that when I'm grateful, I'm just, I'm just going to be looked after. Even though I might want to put prosperity and put good health and put, it just, because with gratitude, even when things aren't going well, there is still a enrichment of my life. And considering I love that feeling of juiciness and feeling enriched, it just, it's, it's the word for me because I'm, I'm good with that. I'm really good with just being grateful for what I have, what's coming and what I'm creating. Wow. I love it so much and on so many levels. Uh, firstly, uh, I think it's it's so important to to give a direction for for the new year, and I mm -hmm. think it's um, as important to to keep it simple as much as possible. Yes, and um, meaningful, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, like I say in in the description of um, the gratitude podcast, I believe that gratitude and thanksgiving aren't just um a celebration that that we do once per year but it's something that we we can do more often and we can enjoy its benefits more often and uh, by choosing the uh, the word gratitude for the next year um we we give this this beautiful direction to uh yeah to get back to uh, whenever things are great we can enjoy them more uh, through gratitude mm. and whenever things are challenging uh, we can use gratitude and the resilience that it gives us um, to uh, either accept or transform um, those experiences into into something better but um I love this idea and I love the fact that you shared it with us and um, what I'm hoping, gratitude seekers, you might think about your own word. It can be gratitude or appreciation or thankfulness or something similar. You can choose another word, of course, if, uh, if something else is relevant for you. But um, what I love about what uh, Yemi just shared with us is... Um, that she has this focus and it's very inspiring for me to um, to think about this new year uh, in this wonderful way, choosing mm -hmm. one thing to focus on and to to explore within us and we, and outside of us as well, right? Yes. Yes. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I think I think it's amazing, and I'm I'm really happy that 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 you shared this with us, and um, that that we got to spend this time together and um, in, enjoy mm -hmm. gratitude and uh, the appreciation we have uh, for each, for each other, and yeah, I, I love it, and. Um, since we're we're at this topic i'm i'm really curious in all of these experiences that you that you had um if you had some people that you're particularly grateful for like people that have really made a difference and you would like to mention 
Mm. Ooh. Ooh. George and Sarah was not expecting that question, but I should. And it's, <laughs> there are a lot of people, but the, the people who came to the front of my mind almost immediately was my uncle. Not know, don't know how much you know about my story, but a lot of the I work know. I do is in the trauma space. And my uncle, for want of a better word, abused his power, his sexual power over me as a little girl. And, you know, the reason why it's throwing me off is because I, I get my downloads. So I, I like to honor myself. There's a part of me that's grateful for him, his existence, not necessarily the action or abuse of the power, because without that event, I couldn't be helping the thousands of people I'm already helping now. I would have had no point of reference. Um, I wouldn't be able to have gone through the transformation to use my voice in the way I am um, and to do it with compassion and, and a hunger for people to transmute that pain. So I'd, I'd, I'd be doing a disservice to the workings of the world if, if he wasn't on that list. Um, a number of women, the, the, the matriarch in my, in my family, I'm really grateful to them because the resilience they've given me is like no other and the gift they've given me to be able to fly away, um, i.e. to Japan, to Australia, it, it, it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't get better than, than giving me the roots to my ancient culture but then also giving me the wings to go and learn somebody else's. So I'm really, really grateful to the matriarch within my family. And those are the two that came, but trust me, there are so many people. Um, and so it's important I honor them in, in the moment it came up for me. Wow. I love it. I think it's so powerful that you mentioned this, uh, uh, this experience about the trauma and, um in my own experience and in the experience of of many people they have um uh, managed to to find gratitude after these kinds of experiences many of them traumatic um and yeah we we are we are uh, the lucky ones that we were yeah. able to find the gratitude in in these experiences and yeah i'm i'm sure that there are many people suffering one way or another or in pain um mm -hmm. that aren't yet able to find the gratitude in in that experience and i'm yeah. i'm really grateful that you are doing this work and you you get to understand them where they come from and help them um see more of of what's possible to right. uh, to perceive from from that yes. experience so yes amazing mm. Mm. how many yeah. thank yous can we get in a podcast thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a good question Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's uh, that's one of the the beautiful part about gratitude mm. there's uh, never too much uh, in the sense that we can always experience more gratitude more deeply in more areas of our life and um, on this note I, I would like to um, to wish our listeners uh, an amazing 20 21 uh, 22 sorry oh my god um, and uh yeah i think it's uh it's really wonderful that we that we we're, we're living these days and uh yeah i think we can always enjoy more gratitude in our life and i hope that they will stick around and um continue with gratitude and uh with learning more about it and exploring more about gratitude in in their own life Yami, thank you so much for for being here with us, for um, doing this special episode with us and for giving us so many 
inspiring ideas and uh, so much wisdom. I, I really appreciate you and I really appreciate your voice and um, how you manage to speak beautifully and kindly with me and with our listeners and uh, how you express your gratitude. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And if you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude. Since 1981, Unbound has connected people like you with families worldwide on their self-directed paths out of poverty. A brighter future is possible for these families when we all walk together. Sponsor a child today and you'll help a family take the first steps on their path. Change their future in just one click. Start walking with your new friend today at unbound.org walk.